When questions of the bra were asked, these were common responses. Uh, I, just, I just don't want to say. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Um. I. I I don't know how to answer this question. No, that's something I go home and think about every night. No opinion. Uh, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, this is awkward. The bra was a revolutionary invention that had an emotional impact on society, provoked opposition from different religious groups, brought a fascinating new fashion to life, and affected the move for feminist rights. Women of all ages have been seeking support for centuries. The first traces of bras can be seen in ancient Greece where women wore simple constructions resembling a bandeau. However, keeping this in mind, devices like these were not seen again till the mid-1800s. In the mid-1800s, generally all free-born women constantly had their bodies being constricted and manipulated by the corset. This everyday item of clothing became popular during the Renaissance and Victorian era, emphasizing an hourglass figure. Corset wearing became a natural way of life for women, and no one thought twice when babies were strapped into belts and young girls were pushed tightly into training corsets. In society, it was a clear representation of the upper class, and there was great pressure during this time for women to be able to attain the idea of a perfect body. As corset styles got tighter and tighter, most women were willing to work their shapes to meet these advancements in order to receive some type of untitled approval and fit into society's norm. Towards the late 1800s and the turn of the century, a new attitude arose from women expressing the desire to wage work, earn an education, take part in leisure activities, and play sports. As this occurred, the whole idea of corset wearing came into question. When women started demanding more rights and independence, it threatened the comfortable way of life men in society had gotten used to. This was where the opposite sexes lived in different social spheres. The women being immobile were expected to stay in the house all day, entirely dependent on men. In addition to this, the health risks of the corset were being overlooked. It took prominent feminists such as Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Amelia Bloomer to bring these facts to light, and from this, the clothing reform movement was born. Because of the serious disadvantages to the corset, women started speaking out and petitioning for more rational dress. On a small level, women made a difference by organizing themselves into clubs. Here it states in the New York Times in 1894, the women in Denver created an organization in order to receive more rational dress. Despite this whole movement for rational dress, it took a long time and was hard for many women who were raised wearing a corset to get the courage to discard this traditional item of clothing. It took the bolder, younger generations born during the time of the movement to convince fashion magazines and older women that a beautiful body was one that was natural. The first corset substitutes were patented in 1863. However, in 1893, Mary Tusek patented the breast supporter that is most similar to the bra today. Also around this time, falsies, or modern-day push-up bras, were invented. As the 1900s rolled around, women were tired of the unsightly ridges of the corset. Their problems were solved when Mary Phelps Jacobs created the first modern brassiere. This bra was patented in November of 1914, then sold to the Warner Brothers Corset Company, who would later make $15 million off this invention. Also around this time, with the start of World War I in 1914, the bra was given its moment to shine. Medals were in short supply, so the U.S. War Industries Board ordered women to stop buying corsets. This saved enough metal for two battleships and pushed women into wearing bras. As this occurred, men grew uncomfortable with the growing freedom women were getting while wearing the bra. In addition, as the popularity of bras grew, manufacturers were eager to get the unfamiliar product of a bra in stores. This bra revolution led to a reform in advertising that changed the world forever. In order to convince hesitant department stores to display this product and to attract a wide variety of customers, manufacturers were then eagerly trying to create clever, diverse advertising claims. The promotion of the bra changed the way advertising was carried out, and it became an indispensable fashion staple as early as 1917. From this point, the next few decades would prove to be a time of constant change in the bra world. In the 1920s, a lace-up bra was created to accentuate a flat chest. In 1923 specifically, William and Ida Rosenthal formed the brand Maidenform, 
where they would develop the banding cup sizing system still used today. I was a real dish in my maiden form bra. Made in France? No, maiden form. You'll be a real dish too. By the mid 1930s, the sweater girls emerged, and by 1948, the first modern push up bra was invented, called the Rising Star. After this, trends toward high, unmoving breasts intensified, leading to the bullet bust, made popular by Jane Russell. During the 1950s, many bras were created that helped enhance the breasts to make them appear to be larger, such as the Chancenet bra, which became one of the best sellers in maiden form. As the bra evolved into a sexual garment, different religions withheld from these risque styles, sparking opposition. Although none of these groups or cultures spoke out against the brassiere, they reacted by not joining the rest of the nation and experimenting with the cleavage and lust that followed the later modified bra. Starting with Muslims, they were told to cover all but their face, hands, and feet in front of men they were not related or married to. The veil in Islamic dress played a key role in women's seclusion. A 15-year-old Muslim girl was asked why she wore a veil. She responded, it's called a hijab. Basically, I wear the hijab for modesty reasons. With the hijab, I have to wear generally loose clothes along with long sleeves and long pants all the time for the same reason. Another conservative religion is Mormonism. Latter-day Saints reflect their religion in a sacred undergarment and their everyday clothing. This garment covers a lot of skin, and the clothes they wear every day must not reveal it. So we don't wear bikinis, we don't show our stomachs, we don't have two short shorts, we don't show our shoulders or our bra straps. However, in many cases, this seductive bra greatly affected the values of conservative religions, decreasing their interest in honoring their beliefs. Victoria's Secret was also founded in 1977 by Rory Raymond, allowing customers to order apparel through a catalog. The difference between Victoria's Secret and most lingerie stores was that Victoria's Secret stores were clearly organized, allowing a man to comfortably shop for his partner. The company was then sold to the Limited, and became a multi-billion dollar company that would forever make an impact on the bra industry. The creation of this company further emphasized sexuality and advertisements of the bra. Following the 1980s, most women were happy to have custom breast support available to them through bra fittings done by trained specialists. Confidence was also a big outcome from the creation of the bra because it allowed women to feel good about their appearance and gave them the ability to follow new trends in fashion. A woman could walk down the street with her chin up, knowing that with her choice of undergarment, she could be seen as a respected figure in society. Pretty woman, walking down the street, pretty woman, the kind I like to meet, pretty woman. realize the prominent role the bra has played in society, opening the gateway to a free lifestyle women were denied for thousands of years. This revolutionary creation sparked a reform movement during a time where nothing of its kind had ever been created before. From this point on, it would continue to reform how a proper woman's body would be portrayed in society, whether this was emphasizing the breasts in the 50s or flattening the chest in the 20s. Throughout these constant changes in styles of the bra, it produced reactions, both good and bad. It is accurate to conclude that today the bra has transformed into more of a sex symbol, while its more traditional values have been relinquished. The bra over time has also built itself into a multi-billion dollar industry with thousands of brands, all contributing to the pressure women have to fit into what society has declared as normal. She's a lady.